I am Alex Kincaid, Second Amendment attorney in Boise, Idaho, and I am happy to bring you this video today about sanctuary laws, what they do, what they don't do, how we can maybe create them where they will actually provide some protection to us, the law-abiding gun owners in the United States of America. Um, I have worked very closely in Idaho over the last decade with the Idaho Second Amendment Alliance. And when we first started working together, Idaho was ranked 35 in the country for gun rights. We're now very proud to be number one. Um, but it's a constant battle. We, we can't sit back and relax. We are constantly trying to sit down and figure out what are the most important issues this year to address. And of course, last year in 2021, the biggest issue was how are we going to protect ourselves against the Joe Biden administration? What are we going to do uh, this legislative session to protect us from all these threats that are being made about registration or bans or um, taxing us on regular firearms, like we're taxing firearms that are subject to the National Firearms Act. How are we gonna prevent this? How are we gonna protect our way of life? Because we, the people in the state of Idaho, have a way of life that supports gun ownership. We support our right to self-defense. We don't rely on others to do it for us. And we don't want laws that are flying in the face of our values in this state. So we had to get kind of creative because I'll tell you what, those sanctuary laws that most states are passing around the country, where they started passing last year, you know, the same ones that are being passed by localities like cities and counties are becoming sanctuary locations. Those really aren't going to do anything. Uh, and it's, it's sad to say, but it's true. Uh, if they do something, what they usually do is mislead people into violating federal law and those people wind up getting prosecuted. So we passed that kind of a sanctuary law in Idaho 10 years ago. We needed something new. We needed something creative. We needed something that would actually help because what we saw over the last decade was that the courts are not going to support the kind of sanctuary law that says, hey, federal government, here's my middle finger, you know, go, go have some fun. We're not going to obey whatever you say. We're just going to defy you and, and not obey federal law. As soon as those cases go to court, now people are looking at, well, isn't there something called the supremacy clause? Isn't there something called the commerce clause? And yes, there is. That those, those are actually provisions in the law that say that you cannot just lift your middle finger to the federal government. So the Ninth Circuit, which you know is the jurisdiction where Idaho exists, said just that to someone who wanted to invoke one of these sanctuary laws. They're also called Firearm Freedom Acts. And that law came out of Montana. It's very similar to what we have in Idaho. And the Ninth Circuit said, uh, yeah, we're not gonna help you. Uh, that case was um, denied cert by the United States Supreme Court. They weren't interested in even reviewing it. So we had to get creative. We had to think a little harder here. How are we gonna protect ourselves from infringements on our right to keep and bear arms. And what we came up with was, well, okay, let's, let's start at the beginning because Idaho has a constitution that protects the right to keep and bear arms. And that protection is separate and apart from the federal government's protection of this God-given right in the United States constitution. Our constitution, besides reciting that local governments can't infringe on this right, um, besides reciting that we actually have a right to keep and bear arms, says no law shall impose licensure, registration, or special taxation on the ownership or possession of firearms or ammunition, nor shall any law permit the confiscation of firearms except those actually used in the commission of a felony. Well, that would be called evidence, so that's why we allowed that, um, because we also support our law enforcement in this state. And that specific protection in our constitution is what we're writing on with our new sanctuary law. Um, and, you know, we've learned in the last 10 years that the, the nullification, the defiance type laws are not going to work. This is the kind of sanctuary law that is, it's interposition. It's not nullification. We are setting up a way for us to argue that because of our dual system, our, 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 our system of states and federal governments, 
we have some sovereignty in this state. And we have the ability to say that a pre-existing fundamental right can be protected to a greater degree at our state level than what the federal government says they're going to protect. And the reason is because we have the Ninth Amendment and the Tenth Amendment in the United States Constitution. So I wanna, I wanna read what those say. So we're all on the same page here. The Ninth Amendment says the enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. And the 10th Amendment recites that the powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states, respectively, or to the people. We're using the 10th Amendment as both a sword and a shield in this new law, because what we've done is we've said, these firearms are a way of life for the people of Idaho. We need 30 round magazines. We need magazines of any size, 100 round magazines. We need ARs, we need pistols, we need plans for building guns. Uh, we need all of this stuff because that's what we value here. And these things are specifically protected by our constitution regardless of what the federal government says. And we as a state have the ability to provide greater protection to the people of the state of Idaho than what the federal government says we have. And this comes from both the Ninth and the 10th Amendment argument, and it also comes from the history and case law going back uh, to before the Civil War, where the federal government passed something called the Fugitive Slave Act. Uh, if you don't know what that is, I can't go into it in great detail, but look it up and look up the case of um, Prigg versus Pennsylvania. So we have history, we have case law that goes beyond what was going on at Civil War times and also delves into the First Amendment and the Fourth Amendment, which are also fundamental rights, that says that states can in fact protect these rights to a greater degree than the federal government. The right to keep and bear arms is a pre-existing fundamental right per Justice Scalia in the Heller case. And so we are making an analogy to the First and the Fourth Amendment and the case law that has played out in the United States Supreme Court with respect to those protections and making the same argument on behalf of our right to keep and bear arms. The main difference between what's been done and what we're now proposing and have done in the state of Idaho, and we're proposing to other states to give this a try, is this idea of interposition and placing these issues before the judiciary and arguing uh, the limiting powers of the federal government versus the rights that are retained by the states. We retain the right to protect the right to keep and bear arms. We don't have to rely on the federal government to do that. Um, so these are exciting times for us here in Idaho. And we feel that we have proposed something that um, may potentially be of interest to the United States Supreme Court if, if this actually gets litigated. And, you know, the, the lawmaking process never gives us exactly what we're hoping for. Our first draft of this law was absolutely beautiful. It had everything we wanted in it. Through the sausage making process, we wound up with uh, a bill that, that in a law now that wasn't quite as good. Um, things were left out that we certainly intend to pursue in the future, like requiring the attorney general to challenge unconstitutional federal laws. They locked that one right out of there. Um, but we have enough in the resulting law, the resulting sanctuary law that came out in Idaho in 2021 that we can make some really interesting arguments above and beyond these acts of defiance that are being passed in other locations. Stay vigilant and we will certainly keep you updated on the AK Show as things play out. Uh, as always, thank you for watching.